Hello, my name is Kevin Smith. I'm a Keysight Applications Engineer for Scopes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use uh, the, the measurement trend uh, math function, which can be an extremely powerful analysis tool. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a uh, swept sine wave uh, from 100 kilohertz to 2 megahertz in a 1 millisecond interval. Anytime you walk up to a scope, um, you want to do a default setup, which I've already done, but that's okay. And I have a trigger signal on channel 3, which if I do an auto scale, um, we'll find that. And you probably don't want to try and trigger on a waveform if it looks any, directly on a waveform if it looks anything like this. Um, that is just really uh, hard to uh, trigger on. So we have a sync, uh, sync pulse to trigger on at the start of the frequency sweep. Um, but really, I don't need to have uh, have that scene. So I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to rescale my waveform, put it right at zero. If I just mouse over the offset, hit zero, and I have a, a nice zero there, and I want to make it a little bit bigger. Um, really, I want to use about 7.2 divisions, uh, which optimizes the signal-to-noise ratio. And since this is a 2 megahertz uh, max sine wave, I can also ch turn on a um, uh, analog bandwidth uh, limit. I've got a, quite a few selections on the S series. Um, other scopes may or may not have that. Depends on the scope. Um, so that'll further improve my signal, signal to noise. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go out in time so I can kind of see the, the whole frequency sweep and get a few of them on screen. And I can hit single. Just want to keep our eye on the sample rate. Make sure it's plenty high. Two giga samples is more than enough for uh, two megahertz. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to turn on a frequency measurement. I want to expand out the drag and drop menu. I can just drag frequency measurement onto uh, onto the signal. Okay, I can also do that from the measure drop down to add measurement if I wanted. Um, time to uh, frequency, just cancel out of that. And now I may or may not want to adjust the thresholds. I can do that by right clicking on frequency or also from the measure drop down and select edit measurement. Um, now I can do uh, I can select my thresholds, and for most of the time, all the timing measurements, there is uh, top and base definitions which need to be followed. You can do there's a lot of different gyrations, and the help menu will tell us more about that. Um, all waveforms, individual waveforms. Really, I'm only using one channel, but I'm, I always like to use uh, individual channels. Um, and I'm going to select custom level plus hysteresis. And if I click set 50% peak to peak, there we go. Um, what this says is that the signal has to cross through minus 51 millivolts through zero to plus 51 millivolts to be considered a valid measurement. Uh, snap to zero, so if it, if it went to like, uh, for example, two millivolts, and I had this box checked, it would still, the threshold would still be zero. And this is uh, from, uh, this applies over at um, minus to plus 10 millivolt range. Okay, um, so now I'm using basically absolute thresholds uh, for, for good repeatable measurements. So I'll um, hit OK. And now I want to go to the um, math drop-down menu, and I can do functions. Um, and I want to select uh, from the All menu. can hit M here to get to the M section. Measurement trend. Okay. Another way to do that is um, by hitting the plus button up here and selecting the function. And it's preset from there. And you can see I have already labeled, changed the label to frequency trend, and I can put in something else here if I wanted. Um, <clears throat> so now I have this frequency measurement trend on, and I'm going to minimize this to uh, use, more, use, use more of the screen. I can right-click and select um, two grids for my viewing pleasure. And I can bring uh, one of the waveforms down here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is my frequency trend. Now I can do I can use measurements on it. Um, for example, I could uh, select the period measurement. So I get about um, uh, 500. Uh, that's pl plus width. Um, that period. Here we go. And we should see it's very close to one millisecond. 
Yep, there we go. Um, I can do other types of measurements, or I can do vertical measurements. I can do, a, for example, a V peak to peak. All right. Um, I could do <clears throat> an RMS measurement. And one of the points I want to show here is that um, with the measurement, the, the frequency measurement dropped off the bottom of the screen, but I can simply drag this up and down um, to, shoot, to, you know, <clears throat> use up different parts of the screen. I can do up to uh, 10 measurements at once. I can, I can display. Um, I can even use markers. There is a front panel button for that, but the markers I want to set to um, uh, track waveforms and specifically the frequency trend. Okay. And now I can drag the markers around to wherever I want on this trend. And one of the neat things um, <clears throat> with the tr with the uh, markers that we do now is we uh, we call these delta markers, and we automatically annotate um, the delta um, X and the delta Y. So that's that's a pretty cool uh, feature. <clears throat> so I can also finally. Um, if I right-click on the waveform, I can save the, the trend to a file or to memory. <clears throat> I've got a lot of different file formats. Um, waveform, uh, most of these are good for storing back into the scope. Um, H5 and BIN store very fast. CSV is good for Microsoft Excel. Just save them to the, to the hard drive. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to show is if we go to Utilities, um, User Preferences, Utilities, excuse me, uh, front panel sources, I can change um, the channel two knobs to control the um, uh, the scale. So if I'm if I'm knob, if, I'm a, if, I, if I prefer to use the knobs, um, I can change the scale and offset using the front panel knobs. So that's also a nifty feature. So I hope that has been helpful. Thank you for your attention.